this is actually gonna be my yearly makeup empties video and before I flip the camera angle and show you what I used up for the entire year I just wanted to give a little disclaimer so last year I had an absolute amazing year of finishing off a ton of empty makeup products and perfume and nail polishes but at the same time, I had a stockpile of really small deluxe size sample products. I had a ton of items that were already halfway used up before I started project panning for that year. And then this past year, I also moved. I didn't have access to all of my makeup products and everything for, there was a good two months where all of my stuff was pretty much packed up. You know, I had some of my essentials and stuff, but the majority of my stuff was packed up for at least two months. There's just a lot of factors that went into 2016's numbers. Overall, I'm still really satisfied with it, but I definitely dropped the ball on a handful of the categories. I am kind of kicking myself in the butt for not, you know, paying a little bit more attention to it and kicking myself into high gear and constantly using up products that I could have used up before the end of the year because right now I have probably seven or eight items that are this close to being finished off and they're gonna be some of the first things that are finished up in 2017. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys, I keep a running like ledger of the makeup products that I use up throughout the year. So let me take this stuff out of here so I can lift this up. So for 2015, I think I had one, two, three, six pages front and back filled up and for 2016 you can see the months are a lot shorter when I don't have projects going like a project pan or a seasonal project I definitely do not finish off nearly as much stuff makeup wise as I would have if I you know if there were no projects going on let me give you the grand total number of what I used up including the all of my makeup products, my nail polish, and my perfume because to me those are my beauty related products that I'm really focusing on trying to use up throughout the year. It looks like my grand total was $1,475. So, I mean, I'm happy with that number. Obviously, it could have been a ton more if I would have pushed myself a little bit further, but I am super satisfied with that. And I did want to say in 2015, I did have, I did finish off $437 more in 2015. So 2016, great year for me. And if I can stay above $1,000 for, you know, throughout the year of 2017, I will be a happy camper. A lot of people ask me how I store all of my makeup empties throughout the year. And I just put a Sephora bag like this in the back of my closet, it's tucked out of the way, and throughout the year, I just drop in all of the makeup products, perfume products, and nail polishes that were in projects, that I finished, you know, that were just in my empties videos. They just go in this bag at the back of my closet. It really doesn't take up that much space. This is, you know, almost $1,500 worth of makeup, and it fits in this little Sephora bag, so. To me, I don't think it takes up that much space. It's not that big of a hassle. I don't feel like a hoarder because after this I can go recycle, I can go, you know, get rid of what's in here and I don't feel bad about it. So let me swap the angle and show you a wide angle view of what I finished off and then I will break it down into the separate categories. I'll probably end up putting the, the time stamps for different categories in the description box for you. So if you wanted to bounce around between the different categories, you're more than welcome to. Definitely let me know if you saved your empties throughout the year of 2016. That is it for the intro, so let's cut over to the products. So here we go, this is what $1,475 worth of makeup looks like. I'm just gonna scroll through really slowly and then we will break it up into the categories and I'll break it down into smaller groupings for you. But 
This is what I was able to finish off for 2016. So let's go ahead and break it into separate categories. So here are all of my face primers and I do have two sunscreens over here on the right. I just didn't know where else to put them. So I was actually pretty impressed with this category because I don't typically wear a face primer on a regular basis, but I had three of the MAC strobe cream minis and these are the ones that come in the free orders with any MAC online purchase. So I did go through three of these little guys. I cut them open so I could get all the product out of those. And then I have one from Kula. That is actually their mineral daydream primer. There's one from Burberry. There's the luminous fluid base. That one was okay. I feel like it was breaking me out though. I do have one from Smashbox, one from Murad. This one is the Murad Hydrodynamic Quenching Essence. And then the two sunscreens over here on the side, I have the Dr. Jart UV Sun Fluid. It has an SPF of 30. And then I also have a little foil packet here. I didn't add this one into my numbers, but this is the UV Essential with the SPF of 50 from Chanel. And I did actually end up purchasing the full size of this guy over here on the right, but I just thought I would toss all those in. I thought I did a pretty decent job. My face product, like foundation, BB cream, tinted moisturizer category, it's pretty sad as far as using up full products this year. I only have one little mini Chanel foil packet of the Vita Lumiere Aqua. I actually really enjoyed that. It was a little bit dark for me. This was in 30 beige, but this one over here on the right, I actually really enjoyed this. This is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. This one had the SPF of 20, which was really nice. I did have the shade Blush, which is what they matched me to. I don't think that match was correct. But if I could find another match to this product that was a little bit lighter, it tended to oxidize just, just a smidgen. So if I could find one that fit me a little bit better shade-wise, I would totally repurchase that again. But this one did have 1.7 fluid ounces of product, so not too bad. All right, now this one is a little better, I would say. Um, this is my concealers and technically correctors. So I had, over here on the left, I have the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I really enjoyed this one. I had shade number 15, I believe it was. Yeah, in Fair. I also had the First Aid Beauty Eye Duty Triple Remedy product. This was like a pinky salmon-y tone. I'm not sure, you might be able to see a little bit down at the bottom of the cap there. I really like the cooling tip on this and I don't know. Sometimes I would wear this as a concealer all by itself. Other times I would have to put something over the top and set it. It did have a really nice kind of pinky salmon shade to it, so it was nice for concealing and camouflaging, but mm, probably won't be buying that one again. This one, this is the Lorac Touch Up To Go Foundation and Concealer Pen. Because it was such a dark shade, I ended up using this one as sometimes a concealer in the summertime, but mostly as just a corrector under the eye area. This was super dark for me. I have a little foil packet here from It Cosmetics. This had a ton of product in here. This was the Bye Bye Under Eye in the shade Neutral Medium. Way too dark for my super fair skin. So again, I had to use this one as sort of a corrector product. And then these are actually kind of nice samples if you can find these at like an online order for Sephora. They come with three little foil packets with a decent amount of product in them. I used the lightest one, I think it's number one, as, as a highlighting concealer product. This one was a little bit darker, I think this was shade number two. And then 4.5 was very dark and I used this one as a corrector. So I had two of these little packet things. I used all of it up. So these did hang on for a couple of weeks actually. So 
Anyway, that was my concealer and I guess corrector category. Again, powders this past year were slightly embarrassing compared to what I know that I can go through. Um, generally speaking, I could go through a powder in about three to three and a half months if it has nine to ten grams of product in it, but this Too Faced face powder, this was a really nice one. This one, the specific name on this is the Too Faced Amazing Face SPF 15 Skin Balancing Flexible Coverage Foundation Powder in the shade Vanilla Creme. I haven't seen this in stores, but if I did or if I ever saw it anywhere, I would definitely pick this up again. This was a beautiful powder, very lightweight, never never really looked cakey on the skin either. So I've been trying not to set my face products too much with powder overall. I'll just use it in certain areas. So that's probably why I only had one finished off for 2016, but I'm okay with that. This is my blush category and I have a blush right now that is so very close to being finished off, but it just didn't make it in time for the year. But this is one of the Tarte 12 Hour Amazonian Clay Blushes in the shade Mirage. I do believe this came out of a either a holiday set or just like a mini set. This is a smaller size when it only had 1.5 grams. This was a very light, easy pink with just the slightest hint of a peachy tone to it. Super easy to wear for my light skin. Never really felt like I was overdoing it with this blush. I actually really enjoyed this a lot, so I'm sad to see this go, but I'm glad that my blush numbers have went down by one. I only had one bronzer that was used up in 2016, but happily enough, it was my NARS Laguna bronzer. This is my all-time favorite bronzer ever. I actually use this to both contour kind of and bronze on the skin so this guy was used up towards the end of the year really happy to get this one used up i did have to repress this one actually to get it finished off but um, i have since repurchased this one so happy that i have one of my bronzers out of the way it's looking a little better um over here on the left i have a little foil packet that actually had a ton of product in it this was from Becca. This is the Shimmering Skin Perfector, the liquid version in Opal. And Opal is just a little bit dark. It probably would work the best for me during the summertime. I also have a little deluxe size of the Benefit What's Up cream highlighter. You can see my markings on the side from when it was in a project. And this one is completely finished off. I'm not planning to scoop out what's on the inside of the little holder here. The only exception sometimes is with my lipsticks that I absolutely love. So here is the Benefit What's Up. And then the last one over here is from Physician's Formula. And it was close. This one was almost not finished by the end of the year. But this is the, let me get the correct name for you. The Powder Palette Mineral Glow Pearls in the shade Translucent Pearl. This is actually my all-time favorite highlighter from the drugstore. These are actually really nice. They're a little bit pricey drugstore-wise, but I was very happy to get this used up. I ended up having to repress this to get all of the last product out of here, but it, this is such a beautiful highlight. You can use it really sheared out and quite subtle, or you can build it up so it looks very noticeable on the skin. So. Those were all three of the highlighter items that I was able to finish off for 2016. For my actual eyeshadow primers, I only have two, but I am quite satisfied. Even though they are deluxe sizes, I'm very satisfied with what I got through this year. So this first one over here on the left is from Laura Mercier. This is one of her eye basics. This was in the shade Wheat. It was a little bit dark for me. It looks like there's still product down on the inside there, but if you look down inside, I got everything out of there that I possibly could. And then this other one is a deluxe size of the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This one was all right. I think I prefer um, a potted form like the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly a little bit better, but this one is a really nice one. They both are. 
They're both actually really nice eyeshadow primers to hold your eyeshadow on for longer. As far as my cream shadows and cream colored bases, I do have five here. Um, I do have a stipulation on one of them, but I'll talk about that when I get there. So this first one over here on the left side, this is from LOC. It's a brand from Birchbox. I think this was one that Tati Westbrook came out with, but I love this one so much that I actually got a little concealer brush or eyeshadow brush and dug out what was on the inside here. I loved it a lot. It was a really beautiful shade. This one was in On Point, but I went through it so incredibly fast that I do not see the reasoning behind repurchasing that guy. It just went way too fast. This next one is from Clinique. This is the Chubby Stick for Eyes in number 01, Bountiful Beige. I did not like this at all. This moved around on the eyes a whole bunch. So if you were thinking about getting one of these, I would advise against it and go for any other option. I, I was not impressed by that one at all in the slightest. I also have a full size of the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in Amethyst. This is such a gorgeous color. It's like a taupey bronze with some purpley mauvey tones to it. It is super pretty. You can't really see the swatch there. I would suggest looking up some Google swatches. This is my favorite shade from her Caviar Stick line. Absolutely love this thing. And then I have the Maybelline Color Tattoo in Bad to the Bronze. This is a really cool product because you can put it down. It looks like you put a ton of work on your eyes. It looks like you have two to three different shades of color on your eyelids, even though you just have the one. Just because of all the dimension that this one has, it's a really beautiful kind of bronzy tone, a bronzy brown sort of shade. And then this last one over here on the end is the one that I have a stipulation with. I tried my hardest to get through this this year. This is the Chanel Lucien d'Ombre in the shade Utopia. This one was limited edition. I wish it wasn't because it's absolutely gorgeous, but this is all that I have left in here. I used up over half of what was in here. And you can see in there, it's starting to crumble. It just crumbles every time that I try to use it. So I cannot physically use it anymore, but I did use over half of this. So I'm just counting this in my empties as half of what the retail price on this is. But if you have any ideas on how to revive a product like this, please let me know. It is such a gorgeous tone and so shimmery and beautiful that I wish that I could use up the very last little bits of it. But until then, this one is just going in my empties. Word to the wise, if you have any of these, use these ASAP. For my liquid eyeliners, I do have five that I used up for this past year. This first one over here on the left is the Jordana Fabi Liner. These ones run out so quickly, I don't suggest those. There's the Julep Fluid Eye Glider. I actually really enjoyed that one, surprisingly. One of my all-time favorites is the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner right here. And then the other one on this side is the Physician's Formula 2-in-1 Eye Booster. This one's in Ultra Black. And then the very last one over here on the end, which I have repurchased also, is the Elf Expert liquid liner in the shade Jet Black. This is one that's like the actual, you know, um, brush tip potted sort of liner. But I do have these five right here that I finished off for the year. Really happy about that. Next bunching of products are my pencil eyeliners. I thought I did a pretty decent job. So this first one over here on the left, this is a deluxe size. It was a scroll up one. So I did use all the product out of here, even though it looks like it's only halfway used up. This one is the NARS Larger Than Life eyeliner in Via Veneto. I actually really enjoyed that one. Then I have this one in the silver packaging. There is one from Bare or not Bare Minerals. This one's from Urban Decay. This was a blue liner. I believe this was in the shade Binge. And I used it so close down to the bottom. I don't know if you can see the wax sticking out of the blue <laughs> in there, but it is impossible to use anymore. There are two from Jordana. These, this one is a green one in the shade, 
J Jewel. And then this black one here is the same line. It's the 12 hour made to last liquid eyeliner pencils in this black one is in black point, but I do really like this line from Jordana. I have a nude one here from Rimmel. This is the Scandalized Waterproof Coal Liner in the shade Nude. I use that one only for the waterline. And then this last one on the end, I did have the box for it. This is the Lancome Drama Liqui Pencil. I was not a fan of this. It was extremely difficult to get into my waterline. And then I ran into the issue that this little end base here kept spinning when I was trying to sharpen it. So I tried to glue it, but I could not get it to sharpen anymore. So this one, unfortunately, is definitely not gonna be one that I would purchase ever again. Maybe this one was a little dried out or something, but regardless, those are my six pencil eyeliners that I finished off for 2016. My last eyeliner category are my gel eyeliners. So this first one over here on the left is one from MAC. This is the Fluid Line in Dark Envy. This was actually a deep green shade. And I will show you in here. This one is completely used up. I love the Fluid Line formula from MAC. You can either use them as a kind of a cream base to put down before you put eyeshadows down, or you can actually use them as a liner like they're intended to be used for. And then this other one over here, this is actually just a deluxe size sample, but it was a pretty decent size sample, I would say. This is the Tarte Tartist uh, Clay Paint Liner. Yeah, and it came with this little pot here. I completely used up all of that stuff, and it made me want to purchase this liner in the full size. So those are my two gel eyeliners. So I have eight mini mascaras, one bottom lash mascara, and then five full size or larger size mascaras. So collectively I have 14 mascaras that were finished off. This first one over here on the left, this is my Clinique bottom lash mascara. It has the teeniest, tiniest, most minuscule wand ever. It's perfect for the bottom lashes. I constantly repurchase that. This little guy right here is from Chanel. This is the Volume de Chanel mascara. I fell in love with that one as well. This was a really nice one too. This is the Dior Dior Show Iconic Overcurl. Beautiful mascara. I have two from Benefit. This is the They're Real, the Roller Lash. This one's my all-time, hands-down favorite mascara in the world. This one is from Laura Mercier. I think it's called the Full Blown Volume Lash Building Mascara. Here's one from It Cosmetics. This is the Hello Lashes. Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. The Buxom Lash Mascara. I really enjoyed that one, especially for combing out any clumps or anything that got into the lash line or in the lashes. Then I have the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. That one was super nice, very thickening mascara. There's the MAC Opi Lash, one of my favorite MAC mascaras. Another one, this is the full size of that Laura Mercier Mascara. This one's my all-time favorite. The Telescopic Carbon Black Mascara from L'Oreal. And then I also have the Unique 3D Fiber Lash System over here where it comes with the gel and then the fibers. I was considering holding onto the fibers and trying to make it work with one of my other mascaras, but I figured since I have had this around for over a year, I'd say sayonara to this one too. So pretty happy overall with my mascaras for 2016. Moving along to my brow products, I thought I did it okay. I really don't remember finishing off a couple of these, but that's the beauty of hanging on to all your makeup empties. You can kind of see what you went through and how to gauge what to buy for the next year. So over here on the left, I have the MAC eyebrow pencil. It's a mechanical one. You kind of scroll it up. You can't scroll it back down, but this one was in the shade Stud, and it was a super, super fine tip on this one, as you can see there, but that one does not scroll up anymore, unfortunately. I had the L'Oreal Brow Stylus Definer, and then this one was in the shade Dark Brunette. I really enjoyed this one. I've actually repurchased that one again. I had one of these from Maybelline. This is the 
Master Shape by Eye Studio in the shade Deep Brunette or Deep Brown. A little mini sample of the Benefit Gimme Brow and also one of the Makeup Forever Brow Sills. It's just like a transparent eyebrow gel. So overall on the brows, I thought I did a pretty good job. Moving along to my clear lip balms and lip treatments. I did have five that were used up this year. I had one of the chapstick, just the original chapstick lip balms in the, sh in the flavor cake batter. That one smelled really delicious. This is the Sephora Super Nourishing Lip Balm. This smelled so delicious and it was a very thin but moisturizing lip balm at the same time. I have one of my all-time favorites, hands down favorite. This is the Lipsa Lip Balm. This is the Swedish lip balm in just the original flavor. It's very minty. I really enjoy that one. Here is one that I got from Walgreens. I believe these are the Revo lip balms and they don't have the names on them after you take off the wrapper that, you know, keeps it sealed. So this one was in Pink Frosted Cupcake. I think it came out of a Valentine's collection. And then this last one over here on the end, this is the C.O. Bigelow Rose Salve. Let me pop this guy open so I can show you. So that one is completely cleaned out. Very happy about this one. I only use this one on my lips for the most part, even though you can use it on other parts of your body like it says right there. I mostly used it on my lips. I did toss a little bit onto my cuticles, but the majority of it, I would say over 95% was used on my lips. And then just so you know that these are used up, this is the Revo one that was finished as well. So yeah, pretty happy overall with how I did in this category. These are the tinted or colored lip treatments or lip balms. The first one over on the left is the Perfectly Posh Candy Lip Dye in the shade Caddy Coral. This one was used up fairly quickly, I would say. It didn't take very long to use this one up. I actually really enjoyed it. It didn't seem to stain my lips, but it did a really nice job hydrating them. This little guy here, this is the Benefit Lolly Balm. This is just a little deluxe eye sample. This quickly turned into one of my all-time favorite lip products. I have repurchased this and I'm almost done with that one as well. So you can see in this one, I actually cleaned out every last little drop in there that I could get out because I did enjoy this so very much. It's very hydrating. It feels so smooth and slick on the lips but it still leaves a ton of moisture on the lips as well. Then I have the Fresh Sugar Rosé Lip Treatment. This one, this is the BB Lips in the flavor Grape from Profusion. This little guy was a major surprise to me. This has become my favorite, one of my all-time favorite lip colors. I dug a little out to do a swatch video for my empties video when I had this in it, but I'm definitely going to be repurchasing this and I'll probably get an extra one as a backup too. So this one is beautiful. It smells amazing. The lip color tint that this leaves on your lips is just perfection. So I'm definitely on the hunt to find another one of these. I just can't remember where I located it initially. And then the last tinted lip balm here is the Maybelline Baby Lips. This one was in the shade... I think it's O Orchid. That I think this was a limited edition one, but this one is finished off as well. So very happy about my tinted lip balm category here. Five is pretty decent in my opinion. This next category is just slightly disappointing for me just because I try to make it a point to work through my lipsticks because I have a ton of them and I really didn't do a very good job this past year. I kind of dropped the ball in 2016. So 2017, I am hyper focused on my lipsticks specifically. So the first one over here that I have finished is the NARS Lipstick in Cruising. Absolutely love this one. This is one of my all time favorite nude lipsticks. And this again is one of them that I actually dug out some of the product out of the tubing after I couldn't apply it to my lips because I love the color so much. This is a beautiful kind of very pale nudie pink color. Then I have the Bite Lipstick in Vouvray and mostly I just use them down like this so after I cannot apply it to the lips 
comfortably, then I call it quits. So that's what the most, the majority of the rest of these are like. But Louvre was a nice one. It slipped around on the lips a lot for me. So I'm happy that this one is moved out of the way. Then I have a Rimmel Lasting Finish Lipstick from the Kate Moss line in number 101. This was part of the 30 Days of Lipstick challenge that I did. I'll link that down in the description box in case you guys were curious about that. I just wore a different lipstick every day for the entire month. The next lipstick that I have here is the MAC Lipstick in Syrup. This used to be one of my favorite ones, but not so much anymore. I've kind of moved on from these kinds of tones. Then I have the L'Oreal Color Riche lipstick in number 170, Cotton Pink. I have another MAC lipstick here. This is part of their Patent Polish lipstick line. It's like a jumbo lip pencil. And these ones, they came in a set. So they didn't have a ton of product in them. That is the holder. So you can see that was the color of it. It's a very pale kind of light shiny nude shade, but that was Innocence. And then the last one on the end is also one of these jumbo lip pencil things. This one was from Tarte. This is one of the Tarte Lip Surgeons ones. And I, the name, everything's rubbed off of this one, but I think the name was like Tipsy or something along those lines. This one did have a bit of a shimmer to it, so it did feel slightly gritty on the lips at times. So this was not a favorite of mine, but I did like the minty, minty scent to it. So there was that one. And then over here on the end, I did add this in because this took me so long to finish because you use such a small amount. This is a Smashbox Instamat Lipstick Transformer. You put it on your lips and it'll transform any lipstick with a sheen into one that looks matte. And it's great in theory, but the lipstick would gather on the inner of my lip like the inner rim of my lip, and it kind of left that white film, which was kind of gross. It's a great idea in theory, but it just did not work for me. Happy to have that one out of the way. I'm okay with the lipsticks that I used up this year, but I'm going to have at least 10 to 15 lipsticks used up in 2017. I'm making it a point. I'm going hard in 2017 on my lipsticks. I don't wear lip liner hardly ever. I do not wear it on a daily basis. So me having two lip liners moved out for 2016 was, I was just ecstatic about it. So this first one over on the left, this is the Milani Anti-Feathering transparent lip liner. It's a clear one. Um, it was all right. I honestly didn't really notice much of a difference between either one of these. This one over on the left is the one from Urban Decay in Ozone. Again, just a clear lip liner. So essentially, you can wear any lipstick or lip product on top of these that you want, and it doesn't exactly have to match the lipstick that you're wearing. So these were pretty cool. Very happy to get these moved out of the way. I do have eight lip glosses that I was able to move out in this past year. So this first one over on the left, I have the Buxom Lip Gloss in the shade Lavender Cosmo. This one is absolutely gorgeous. If you look at the very, very bottom, you might be able to see I really, I know a lot of people really enjoy the shade White Russian as like a pale lipstick topper, but this one in Lavender Cosmo has just the slightest pale pastel sort of purpley tone to it. It's really beautiful. I really enjoy this for the most part. And by the way, in case you're wondering how I got all of the product out of the inside of my lip glosses, I have a video where I show you how to take the stopper out. I'll just link that down in the description box. It looks like from this sitting for so long that there's one little dab left down at the very, very, very bottom in here. But regardless, this one is used up. I finished it at the beginning of the year. I really don't want to be digging around at the bottom of there after so long. So the first one was Buxom's Lavender Cosmo. Then I had one of these e.l.f. Hyper Shine lip glosses in the shade Fairy. This was my all-time favorite color. In, those, in that line, and I think they've since discontinued this line, which is kind of a bummer. I really like the tone and the sheen that this one had to it, but oh well. Then I have a Dior Fluid Stick here. 
This is probably my all-time favorite lip product in the world. I really love these things. This one is in the shade number 389, Kiss Me. Absolutely beautiful product. That's what's on the inside there, nothing. <laughs> and then there's a tiny little bit caught at the very tip of that thing, but I can't get it out. I've tried everything, I can't get it out of there, but that one made me really happy. I have since repurchased that. That's my favorite lip gloss formula of all time. Then I have one from Urban Decay. This is one of their Lip Love Honey Infused Therapy Lip Glosses in the shade Drizzle. Squeezy Tube glosses have way more product than you could possibly imagine. This tube right here had double the amount of product that was in this Buxom one, if you could believe it. But anyway, moving on. This next one, this is a MAC lip glass in the shade Snob. Really happy to have that one used up. Here is one from Makeup Forever. This is the new, the Artist Plexi Glosses. This one's in number 202. And it was okay. They're, they don't even hold a candle to the glosses that they had out before that they discontinued, the Lab Shine ones. These are just okay. Then there's the Tarte Lip Surgeon's Gloss. This one, I think it was in the shade Kiss. This had glitters in it and they were very gritty on the lips. Every time you pursed your lips together, you could feel the grit in it. Definitely not a fan. And then I only had one lip tint or lip stain in my entire empties, so I just tossed it in with my glosses. That's essentially how I used it. This is from The Balm. This is in Staniac, and it was just a little deluxe eye sample, so really happy to get all these guys moved out of the way. For eyeshadows this year, I didn't do too hot, but <laughs> you know, I've definitely done worse. So over here on the left, I do have a Bare Minerals Duo, but I was only planning to use up the one shade out of here. So this is a little duo. It comes with the shade Mixologist and the other one was, I can't read it right now, but I only was trying to use up the shade Mixologist in a project and I did do that. I ended up just crushing out the other one because it did fall off my counter and half of it busted out anyway. So I used up this one entirely. This one I did not use up, so I only counted half of the value on this one, but I was very happy to get that one used up. It was a very beautiful shade and it almost had like a pink tinge to it, so it was a beautiful color for even as a face highlight. These two were actually used up in my Pan That palette for 2016 and I will link that or at least one or two of the videos down in the description box for you guys in case you wanted to watch me pan through these. But this first one here that I used up is the Maybelline Quad. This is in Chic Naturals 40Q Designer Chocolates. And the packaging did break, but I was able to use up all four of the shadows in here. And then over here, this was my oldest palette. I decided to toss it in for Pan That Palette for 2016. And for the most part, I did feel like I got my money's worth out of this. When I open it up, you can see that there is just a little bit left in the corners of graffiti and the corner, the one corner over here of peace, but everything else in here was used up. I was very happy with this palette. I wish that I had pulled it out sooner to use up, but I almost felt like my shadows were at the point of expiring or they had just started to expire. So I was very happy to get this moved out when I did. So I am very happy to say that I have three different things for eyeshadows to move out for 2016. For my setting sprays and facial mists, I did have four. So over here on the left, I have the Kula Makeup Setting Spray. This one did have an SPF of 30 in it. This was not my favorite. I did not like the way that this left a film almost on my skin and I did not like the sprayer mist on this one so definitely not one that I would recommend or repurchase. I had two of the little mini Urban Decay All Nighter setting sprays and then I do have one of my MAC Fix Plus sprays, facial sprays. So very happy to get all these guys out of the way and clear up some more space. 
As far as my perfumes for this year, I feel like I did a pretty decent job. So I do have one, you know, body spray, fine fragrance mist. This one is from Victoria's Secret in Passionate Kisses. Man, this smelled so good. This was the cherry and vanilla one. If I could find that some more, wow, I would totally repurchase that guy. There was the Justin Bieber, what is this, Someday perfume. There is the Kat Von D Saint perfume. Really love this one. And I was so very happy I found the backup of this. I knew I had a backup of this, but I'm so very happy that I found it. It took me well over a year to locate it, but I did find it. It's still in the box, and I'm excited to break into that one. I have the Taylor Swift Wonderstruck Enchanted perfume. Again, one of my all-time favorite sweeter perfumes. This stuff smells delicious. I have the Versace Yellow Diamond perfume. This was just a one fluid ounce bottle, and I can only wear this one in the colder months, like fall and winter time. I cannot wear that in the summertime or spring. I have the mini rollerball of the Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black, the Flower Beauty perfume in Cherished, and that one's a little sentimental because, you know, my name is Cherish, and so when I see perfumes or products that have my name in it, I definitely want to pick them up. And then this last one over here, this is a deluxe size of the Clinique Happy perfume. This is a little sprayer. So those were all of the full-size perfumes and, you know, uh, body sprays that I used up. I also had 16 little sample sprayers. I had two of the Flower Balm Victor and Roll Flower Balm Extreme. Those are amazing. If you like the original Flower Balm, you would love the Extreme version, by the way. And then I had all of these down here on the bottom. I do believe there's 14 of them. 14 of these that get sent out in like free orders and stuff. And then two of that they filled up for me at Sephora. So overall, that's a ton of perfume, by the way. I did not add any of these little sprayer samples into my numbers, by the way. I just wanted to show you what I used up, so I thought it was kind of cool. My nail polishes, and I do have a series on my channel that I started. It's called Project Polish. It's just where I pick out a handful of polishes and use them up throughout the year. As I finish one off, then I add in replacement polishes. And from that, I was actually able to finish off nine of these colored polishes. This is one that was not included in the 2016 Project Polish, but I was using this one in the 2015 version. So I do have 10 colored nail polishes that were used up. I have two of my Sesh Clear. These are my all-time favorite base coats here. Two of the Sesh Vite. Those are my all-time favorite top coats, and then I do have one cuticle oil here from Deep Sea Cosmetics. So overall, I do have 14 finished nail polishes and my one single cuticle oil, so pretty happy about that. Since I did spend money on these, and I feel like they're kind of an integral part of beauty and using items up and part of my makeup collection, I do have a beauty blender here a knockoff beauty blender, and then the Sephora XL eyelash curler. This little sucker ripped out six of my eyelashes the last time that I used it. So this little bad boy is, it's long gone. It's, it's life is over with me. So that is everything that I used up for this year.